I am very interested too in terms of activation of the new Africa, young people taking control of their own destiny. I am into ourselves owning our narrative. Those are the things that for me as a musician, I spend endless hours of energy focusing on that because the music that I do is towards that objective and that mission and that vision. So everything that I do, one Africa, everything that I do, one Ghana, everything that I do is like, we go out there and clean house and all them people who have been instrumental into keeping us where we are circumventing and overcoming all of that so that the new century is an African century. That's my mission. My name is Rocky Dawuni. I am a Grammy-nominated musician from Ghana and also United Nations Goodwill Ambassador for Environment. You know, in every situation, you have certain pivotal moments that define your career. So I will say that, uh, first of all, as a musician, it's my most profound live concert. And then when it comes to also uh, achievements too, I'll say that my first most profound achievement. And then also as an environmentalist and an activist, um, I can also have something that I feel that was also a highlight. So just to really uh, explore the dimensions of my what I do, I would say that for uh, as a performer, uh, my biggest, uh, most profound highlight was when uh, I performed at the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, you know, very historic, uh, you know, stage and very historic place with uh, Stevie Wonder and um, a lot of really amazing artists, including Janelle Monet. And I felt that as a live musician, to have the opportunity to perform alongside such a luminary was uh, also a testament for the journey that I have been on. So that, I believe, is one of the highlights. Uh, and then um, as a musician too, I'll say that the most important highlight, another most important highlight when it comes to um, not necessarily artistic accomplishment, but peer reward too, I'll say was when I was uh, first nominated for uh, a Grammy, which was in 2015 for, um, you know, Branches of the Same Tree, uh, which I felt was an album too that was revolutionizing uh, the sound of reggae by fusing elements of reggae music, uh, high life music, uh, Afro music, uh, to create something that was fresh and new. And when it was recognized by the peers and also served as my first uh, nomination and first nomination for my country, Ghana, uh, to also inspire a generation too that were you know, also exploring the dynamic aspects of music, I felt that that was also a big pivotal uh, mo moment for me. And then as an activist, uh, you know, I also feel that one of the most pivotal moments for uh, me was when I was invited uh, during uh, the uh, United Nations uh, Environmental Assembly that happened uh, in Nairobi, Kenya, where all the representatives of the member states reached, uh, were working to reach um, a landmark agreement on plastics uh, to make sure that it's enforceable because it has become one of the issues that is plaguing the whole world, you know, you know destruction of environment, you know, uh, getting into the water system, uh, causing floods, uh, and it has been a difficult time to garner uh, the consensus for people to act on it. But then there was a global agreement and I was invited as a UN Goodwill Ambassador during the time of the negotiations uh, when everybody gathered in the hall for me to come and, you know, give a short speech as to the importance of, you know, everybody contributing to that. And at the same time too, 
uh, singing a song and having everybody you know, stand up in the halls of the UN and sing along too, as a means to inspire people to make landmark uh, initiatives and agreements that will be transformative for ordinary people on the ground. So I would say those three, for me, uh, defines the dimensions of what I do as a performer, as a musician, and also as an activist. As to why and how I fell in love with reggae music, I think that, um, you know, reggae has always been a popular uh, musical style in Ghana and also in Africa. I think that um, re reggae music, you know, apart from our own traditional music, was one of the international styles of music alongside soca, uh, and then obviously hip hop that were uh, creations of our own brothers and sisters in the diaspora uh, being inspired by us. So, you know, we resonated with that music. And when I was uh, growing up as a, a youth, I was very, very uh, keen uh, as a musician to be able to tell a story, you know, have my music have a, a, you know, a sort of significance and also say something, mean something uh, and articulate something too that was important. And when you look at reggae music, reggae music has always been uh, a music that was not only meant to entertain and uplift, but also to shed light on social issues, issues that were very important to you know the given society that it was operating at that time. And it was also an inspiration for freedom movements uh, around the world and also the black diaspora who were trying to break away from, you know, if it is oppression within, you know, their own communities, uh, like all the events that led to, you know, even in America, uh, you know, people standing up for their rights, South Africa, you know, in Africa. Uh, and even the black experience, reggae music has always been a musical form that has dedicated itself to shedding light on it and also helping empower people. So as an artist who also felt that I wanted my music to be meaningful, you know, you have to be open to the types of music that are already doing that as a means to inspire you and also as a guiding uh, path. So it became attractive to me, artists in that genre who were focusing on Africa, uh, from Benin Spear to Peter Tosh, Bob Marley, you know, Black Uhuru. And then Africa, we also had our own amazing artists like, you know, Alpha Blondie, Majek Fashek, Lucky Dube, who were all utilizing the music as a means to articulate social issues. So it was something that was home first of all the international variant and also there was also the regional variants too that influenced me and i think that those all played a role to make it a musical form that i loved but at the same time too i made sure that my music was not wholesomely that style but it was also a mixture of afrobeat high life music and all the styles too that were influencing me my style of music uh, has been described as Afro Roots. And um, Afro Roots music for me represents the foundation of the sound, you know, because when you talk of the foundation of the sound, that means that you go back to the original African sounds. But original African sounds have also influenced uh, various styles around the world. So Afro Roots for me was paying homage to the, the traditions, but at the same time to making a bold step into the future. So it's for me uh, on the premise of high life music and also styles of reggae music that will influence me, but at the same time to being able to integrate uh, emerging sounds like Afro beats, hip hop, um, you know, sukus, and all of these into a holistic whole that is driven by, you know, Afro grooves, reggae grooves, and high life grooves. At the same time, too, being able to have a message that is 
uh, you know, at the core of it, you know. It's a music to inspire, entertain at the same time to empower, you know. So for me, that is what Afro Roots uh, music is all about. What inspires my songwriting is um, a whole lot of things, a whole lot of, I, I always say that life inspires me because when you submit to the teachings and the directions of life, you also submit to God, you know, because if we all, regardless of our religious faith, we, we, we believe that we are children of God, we are created in the image of God, then our spiritual inspiration will be a key to us being able to expand uh, our realm of influence you know so for me life situation is what my inspirations are you know i try to be like a, an observer um, kind of like somebody looking outside of the construct and being able to look at situations too from different directions and taking that message and trying to articulate whatever people feel into uh, a melodic construct that everybody can identify with. So my songwriting is almost trying to be uh, a sort of conduit and a math piece. You know, if I see stuff that is affecting society, you know, corruption, I'll write songs about corruption. If it's moral corruption, I feel like people are losing uh, the foundation of who they are. You know, I will have to write a song that soulfully and emotionally um, agitates that aspect of them so that they can be able to react to it positively. If I think that it is a song that I want to bring people together, you know, then I'll be inspired by, you know, the movements of people and also the voices that are trying to bring harmony together. And that will inspire my, uh, my lyrics and my message. So the music, I'm inspired by the beauty of life, the power of life, the inspiration of life, the, the force of life, the force of nature, the force of this beautiful construct that we call earth and all the people that are populating that we call people, you know, being able to make connections with people, being able to be a means to inspire each other, being able to uplift each other, being able to tell truth to power, being able to also live and do things for the sake of all of us. That is what inspires my music and my song writing. Since I have been nominated for a Grammy, then that means that I have to talk about it. <laughs> so, you know, when people ask me uh, what it takes to be nominated for a Grammy, my answer has always been the same because uh, this is my, uh, this year, uh, 2022 Grammys, uh, I've been nominated for the third time, which is uh, the song Never Bow Down uh, featuring um, black hero for best global music performance so most people are the question is always how do you get nominated my words are always that to be nominated in my view it's for you to focus on your craft you know i feel that i can only talk about my own unique path than a general uh concept or philosophy of how uh, the masses can make it to the Grammys because if you look at our history, uh, before my nomination, we did not have uh, a nomination for our sound and our music. And the album that was first opened those doors for me was actually an album that I was courageous enough to define a new sound, you know, an album that was fused by a lot of high life music. Uh, fused by, you know, really brought to the fore the Afro root sound that I'm talking about. So that album, Branches of the Same Tree, which is actually the title also says that, Branches of the Same Tree, because I drew from different elements of uh, traditional African and diasporian sounds to, for that album. So I feel that that innovation, sonic innovation, was what 
uh, excited a lot of people. And then when you have an award system too that is based on peers, like musician, producers, uh, people who work within the music industry, people who are music aficionados, they are bound to be excited by, I mean, they can be influenced by sounds that are popular, but when your sound also stands out and it is a means to push the boundary, uh, it can also kind of pique their attention. And I think picking their attention, uh, the Grammys were as a result of that. So I always, when people ask me that question, I'm always, my answer is that be brave to be innovative, be brave to push the boundaries of your sound. You know, as long as you are doing this with a direction of uh, creativity that is, uh, you know, that is honest, powerful, and at the same time too, a sense of evolved songwriting and musicianship with it, I feel that it will be able to arrest ears and also, um, lead to uh, accolades or um, you know um, attention and award nominations like the Grammys so you know just put your mind and get the best production you know the best lyrics the best songs uh, and also a cutting-edge approach that represents your core sound and I believe that all else shall be added on to you I have reiterated constantly that I don't do music for awards. You know, for me, my music is, it defines a mission. You know, my music is about igniting something special in the hearts of people. You know, igniting a spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood, not only among people, but also across the world. You know, bringing the element of God uh, to people you know, celebrating life and what is positive. The reward for me is for people to acknowledge and understand that that is the purpose of life. You know, it, it's, it's for me a mission and a, a, a sonic evangelism. So my reward and my award is not in terms of you know, being elevated to a certain pedestal and being given a certain coveted uh, uh, piece of hardware to, to acknowledge that. But that being said, I also understand that in our business that we are, at certain times there are certain institutions that have a certain level, have a certain legitimacy to um, honor works that they feel are, uh, have, have crossed a certain precipice, uh, pushing certain boundaries, deserve to be part of the conversation. So the Grammys is one of those. And it is, uh, you know, an award that, um, you know, is given to musical excellence and albums that have been released that um, our peers around the world feel that they are uh, important to be talked about and highlighted. So when I am part of that conversation, I'm also grateful and thankful that uh, for a musical form that is has the mission to uh, bring you know, togetherness and um, ele elevate a, a spirit and an energy that is progressive and transformative to people is being honored. And so for me, that means that positive music and music that is uh, uh, promoting all of these ideals are on the rise and are gaining traction around the world. That's how I see my Grammy Award nominations. Having seven, uh, eight albums and also uh, trying to choose which one uh, is my favorite. Uh, it's a very hard thing because each work for me is like 
you know, giving birth to a concept and giving birth to uh, a time in your life when certain things influenced you and you had something to say and that was captured in the album. So every album to me is of equal importance. Um, the thing is that each album will have something that might be magnified because I had new insights and then those insights will represent themselves in the album and then with another album I'll have new insights. So each album is a step-by-step -step reflection of my artistic sophistication, my rhythmic sophistication, my lyrical uh, insights, embracing of new sounds and new ideas and new directions. So they are all equally important to me. So I don't try to choose which one uh, is best for me because for me, they are all good in my opinion. Well, we've talked about the Grammy a whole lot, but the thing is that music is not a competition. We don't have to pin our musical kind of elevation and celebration on trophies and awards. That's my opinion. And I feel that, you know, our musical growth is based upon being able to uh, inspire a lot more musicians to be bold to create so that we can elevate and lift the Ghana musical scene in a in a bigger way. I believe that that's our trophy right there. In terms of how I feel about the evolution of African music on the global space today, I'll say that we are in the new cycle of the golden era because we've had cycles. And I believe that uh, right now in this era when um, we have like the power of the internet, the power of social media, it has allowed our music to equalize the playing field to some extent but also at the same time to as much as it's giving that a lot ability to expand it also allows you know people who are in control of the construct to to define what african music is by letting in what they think should be the african music rather than what is african music but that notwithstanding i see a creative explosion right now you know uh you know the sound of afrobeat uh the sound of you know traditional styles from hip life to um afro roots to um to sukus to afro beats to all of these uh various styles that have been incubated in various parts of africa are gradually, gradually coming to the fore and finding a global audience because uh, now you can use these digital tools to make that music available. So Afrobeat right now is one of the musical forms that is actually at the forefront and gaining a lot of traction around the world. Uh, but it is, it is also uh, following the footsteps of other African musical styles that have opened the way in terms of western ears for years and years and years and years before facilitating uh afrobeat success so that means that that success is not a, a one-sided thing this is an opportunity for uh, African artists to be bold enough to represent what our sound is, to, to tell our stories through our music, uh, to own the narrative of what our music should be doing and our music should be talking about because, you know, we have a big, huge youth population and we need to strengthen our continent. We need to empower our continent. We need to protect our land. We need to protect our water. We need to defend ourselves from you know, other people who want to come and take over our construct. So the explosion of our music should be utilized as a tool to, to tell the stories and empower our people so that our people become stronger. And I feel that when this um, open gate of creativity and opportunity for Africa is utilized uh, for this purpose, then we will fully realize the power of music you know, the power of 
you know, why Africa, you know, being the birthplace of humankind and being the birthplace of all these harmonies and melodies and all of that. Right now, its melodies have actually conquered the world more than any politician or any other form has been able to conquer the world because we've conquered the world through the dance floor we conquer through the hearts of people we conquer through their mindset so now we have the platform to let the world know who we are rather than borrowing and try to become a copy of the world so our time is now let's go for it let's own it and let's do it That message of African unity, uh, I have been a big advocacy for political uh, unity of the continent, uh, cultural unity of the continent, and also economic unity of the continent. Um, you can only uh, look at how much uh, our countries and various parts of our country and our leadership are constantly going outside to go and beg and borrow uh, just to you know, keep us as a people to be able to survive uh, for a continent that, you know, is blessed with so much resources, not only natural, every natural resource. I mean, you go to the Congo, even the cell phone revolution, coal town, everything comes from Congo. But do Congolese own it? Do Africans own it? No. You know, you come... Uh, you know, there's lithium deposits that are being found everywhere that is, you know, can drive the whole uh, renewable energy revolution that is happening in the world. Marcus Gave, who talked about African empowerment and African unity, and also the unity being a means for our brothers and sisters in the diaspora to also come and identify with us. Because if we unite as one entity and one country, that means our brothers and sisters don't have to kind of come somewhere and be like, oh, I'm 50% uh, Ga, I'm 20% uh, um, Ivorian, I'm 20% Togolese. I'm 20 Why would we be 20% of a construct that was created by a colonial system? The name Togo, the name Nigeria, the name and all of these things were all carved and created by colonial entities. So how will your DNA, that is your ancestry, define that? Your DNA defines you as an African, as the child of the soil everywhere. So that's why the unity of Africa to facilitate the, the, the integration of our brothers and sisters at a time when we have the, the youth population, uh, also when it comes to uh, the, the, the intellectual uh, ability to imagine there are 200 million Africans, people of African descent who live in the diaspora of Latin Americas and all of that, and the Caribbeans and all of that, and then also Americas, all being part of the vision of Africa. Imagine that in addition to a united continent, imagine the, the, the expanse of that market. Imagine the expanse of the, the collected and collective, uh, 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 you know, funding base and the intellectual knowledge that can be harnessed from all of that to develop ourselves and present us in our full dignity to take our rightful seat at the table of humanity to help direct the affairs of humanity. If we're able to unite, unity will be the means by which we can be able to push this ideal forward. So for me, there's no other time than at this time when our brothers and sisters are being discriminated upon everywhere in America. You can look at George Floyd. You can look at how people are being treated. You can look at even, I mean, some American leaderships have even described our part of the world as shithole, uh, shitholes, like all of these things that are diminishing who we are. So if everybody is also showing that they don't want us, we should want ourselves. We should work for ourselves. We should live for ourselves. And we should do that not only because you are one tribe, I'm the other tribe. That's a very blinded, limited scope of things. Let's think of ourselves as one people, united by our DNA, our blood, and our connection to this soil, geographically, Africa. And Africa uh, concept of our brothers and sisters home and abroad to create this new place that will inspire man and humanity to its next and new level of evolution. That is the African unity I am talking about.
In terms of artists who have inspired me uh, in my career, I will say that it's a combination of artists and uh, figures who I respect their words and what they have done. Um, first of all, uh, Osaji Dr. Kwame Nkrumah is a big influence on me philosophically and as a visionary. Uh, Marcus Garvey is a big inspiration. Uh, Patrice Lumumba is a big inspiration. Um, Thomas Sankara is a big inspiration. Um, Nelson Mandela is an inspiration. And then when it comes to musicians, um, I'll say Fela Anikola Pokuti, Dana uh, Kwame um, Ampedu, J.A. Adolfo, um, Bob Marley, um, Tupac Shakur, um, you know, amongst many, many, many uh, other musicians um, who have influenced me. Awilo Logomba, you know, Iti Mensa, Kinsoni Ade, Lagbaja. These are all African musicians, diasporian musicians, various musicians who have been key uh, inspirations for me. So it's not really like a specific number. It's just a diverse group of artists and people who I draw inspiration to in my career. In terms of sharing the space with many icons, um, the most memorable, I would say, was uh, Stevie Wonder. Um, I've had opportunity of um, performing with Stevie Wonder about on three occasions. I'll say that it was etched deeper and deeper into my memory. The most profound one for me was when I was launching my album, Book of Changes. And I had planned to do a big concert to launch the album uh, in Los Angeles. So it was a huge concert in the heart of Los Angeles. And that night, um, Stevie Wonder attended the concert. And uh, during a rendition of uh, Wake the Town, he jumped onto the stage and uh, performed with me uh, for that song. And it was really a memorable and historic moment for an artist uh, like me who has idolized and, um, and seen Stevie as one of my musical icons and having the opportunity to share the stage uh, for him. And then for me too, it was important because Stevie is not only a musician, he is an inspirational figure for, you know, uh, Black America. You know, um, he's been very vocal in terms of his politics, uh, being on the side of our people. He spent a lot of time in both uh, Ghana and then also uh, in the United States and has been uh, a respected figure everywhere around the world and also uh, a musical uh, artist that has inspired generation and generation and generation of artists. So that's why for me, uh, the opportunity to play with him and share stage with him, it's not only about the performance, but it's also about myself honoring my journey and having the opportunity to encounter such a luminary. And then when we eventually played together at the Hollywood Bowl, uh, it really brought all of that to, into its apex. And uh, I'm grateful for that. For me, I believe that whatever our talents are, the most important thing is about the legacy that we leave by transforming that talent as a means for advancing our people. So my issues are, first of all, protection of our land, you know, and also at a time to where we need to rid our political system of corruption, you know, of the type of leadership that has been um, instrumental in selling our interests to the highest bidders and taking advantage of the people. We need to break away from that. Uh, I am very interested too in terms of activation of the new Africa, young people taking control of their own destiny. I am 
into ourselves, owning our narrative. Those are the things that for me as a musician, I spend endless hours of energy focusing on that because the music that I do is towards that objective and that mission and that vision. So everything that I do, one Africa, everything that I do, one Ghana, everything that I do is like, we go out there and clean house and all them people who have been instrumental into keeping us where we are, circumventing and overcoming all of that so that the new century is an African century. That's my mission. What the world has to expect from me is that we will be there and Africa shall win. My people, this is Rocky Dauni. You are watching Face to Face Africa, the premier global black voice. Keep tuned.